Whoa! Morning, Trainiacs. It is fresh out there. I need my vest. So do you all remember how a couple days ago I did that video about how I thought Daniela Reef was borderline unbeatable? I don't know how I didn't think about this. I think I know who can potentially beat her. Mel Hothchild. The reason I should know that is because we just interviewed her on the podcast. And Mel and I bonded over our mutual love of peanut butter, so I really should know that. So we're gonna talk about why I think Mel Hothchild might win in Kona right after this group ride. Yeah, 51k ride, whole bunch of sprints in there. I ended up winning the king of the mountain sprint. Straight up, straight up. <clears throat> All right now, Mel Hothchild. All right, let's go. Heavy construction going on outside. Now I know a lot of you are gonna be saying like, who in the fuzz is Mel Hothchild? Well, Mel Hothchild is somebody who we interviewed, who's a fellow Scotia athlete. We just published the podcast with her this past week and looking into her results, she might be the greatest triathlete of all time. She has raced 67 or 68 pro races. She has won 40 Eight of them, she holds the world record for the amount of course records that she's set and the number of half Ironmans done by a woman under four hours and 10 minutes. She has 22 course records, three bike course records, and five run course records. And the reason that you might not know about her, however, is basically since 2014, every single year leading into Kona, she wins, 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 wins and then has been injured coming into Kona. Now all that said, Daniela Reef is Daniela Reef. She's dominant. She is destroying female fields this year, even some of the males in the field this year, and she is the overall course record holder in Kona. She's the person to beat. So let's start with the swim. Daniela Reef isn't gonna be in the very front pack with Lucy Charles and Lauren Brandon, but she'll be in the biggest main pack. Mel Hothchild is not a fantastic swimmer, so she's going to end up coming out of the water in about four to five minutes back of Reef. In addition to that, she's probably worked fairly hard, whereas Daniela Reef gets into that lead pack so that she doesn't have to work hard and kind of cruises her way. That means that going on to the bike, Mel Hothchild is going to have to catch up to Daniela Reef. And this is the big question that is really hard to analyze how it's going to stack up. Daniela Reef amazing biker. Mel Hothchild, amazing biker, but they've never really gone head to head. So we can look back at some of their previous times. Over the last four full Ironman distance races, Mel Hothchild's average bike on a course that is a legitimate distance is a 447. Daniela Reef is a 448. However, in those races that I was doing that calculation on, Daniela Reef was racing against the best of the best in the world, whereas Mel Hothchild wasn't. So she wasn't necessarily pushed nearly as much. In addition to that, Daniela Reef is the top dog. She is going to have everyone gunning for her. So odds are not very likely that she's gonna have anyone that wants to work with her. She's gonna have to do this on her own. Mel Hothchild is probably gonna be getting out of the water with Heather Jackson. And Heather Jackson is an amazing biker. And if you look at last year's bike chart. Dad. Yeah, dad. <laughs> and if you look at last year's bike chart, you see that Heather Jackson caught up to Daniela Reef basically being just a minute or two back. However, because she was working on her own, she ended up falling off of that pace. But if Heather Jackson and Mel Hothchild can work together, get themselves up to Daniela Reef, and Mel Hothchild can hold Daniela Reef's wheel, then they're gonna be coming off the bike together. And then we have runner 
versus runner. Daniela Reef has an ITU background. She holds a lot of run course records. She tends to gain distance on the field in the run. Mel Hothchild was literally a world-class runner, like top 30 in the world in the middle distance, 1500, 3000 meter kind of event competing in the Commonwealth Games and even getting on the podium. But so at that point, we've got to start looking at some of the intangibles. So Daniela Reef. Daniela Reef, obviously really well suited to Kona. Mel Hothchild in the podcast that she did with us, when I asked her if she's well suited to Kona, she responded with, I think so. I really like heat and humidity. They're both very, very lean. However, Danielle is a little bit bigger, coming in at five foot nine inches, 139 pounds, whereas Mel Hothchild is five foot five inches, 114 pounds. Kona tends to favor lighter athletes because it's less body mass that has to be cooled down. Mel Hothschild also makes a point of being fat adapted so that she can get into that aerobic zone and basically just have her body fuel itself, do really, really well at that locomotive kind of chug-a-chug sort of pace. So at that point, it kind of comes down to freshness. Now, freshness, as far as their build up to the season, they've both been qualified for a long time. So they're going to have an equally well-planned out build that they can focus on Kona over the next three months but it comes down to, I think, freshness off the bike. Daniela will have had to fight off Mel, but she will have had a rest in the swim, whereas Mel would have had to work on the swim and work on the bike. So I think the edge probably goes to Daniela, but it comes down to how much grit and outright greasy fast speed does Mel have? And that, we're gonna, I think, have to find out because when they're going like this, you're only going to know what happens and how well they can mentally battle each other once it comes down to it, because we've never really seen either of them go toe to toe with any other athlete. My pick, Daniela. If I'm betting and looking at getting the best odds that I can, I think I gotta go with Mel Hothchild because everyone is underestimating her and that week, there are gonna be a lot more media events that Danielle is gonna have to go to. Mel Hothchild can come in as a dark horse sleeper. Now internet, fight amongst yourselves in the comments below about how ridiculous this is or if you think that it could be very legitimate. While you're doing that, here's a lovely montage from the bike this morning and a run that I'm about to do right now. So after that bike this morning, follow that up in the afternoon with a hill running workout, gradually progressing up to four degrees incline at 8.6 miles an hour for the last few minutes. Basically every two and a half minutes of that 20 minute run, I was either ramping up speed or incline. I feel terrific. All right, Training X, there you go. Comments below with who you think is going to win the Ironman World Championship. Daniela Reef, Melissa Hothchild. I can just picture the Taryn, you are crazy comments happening right now. <laughs>